Hi there, and welcome to another one of my video Bible lessons. First off, I want to um, say, um, if you're enjoying my stuff, um, share it so other people can get the Word of God. And also subscribe, because I always am posting new stuff daily. Um, so uh, that's what I have to say about that. Um, today, um, I'm not doing the Gospel of John. Um, I'm doing um, kind of about how we think and how it affects our life. So um, I will uh, start my lesson and I hope it, this really impacts you guys because it was a really fun one to write. Uh, just get my Bible ready. Let's see here. There we go. In Colossians 2 verse 8, Paul is writing to a group of people he hasn't personally met. He was writing to them because he was excited that they had received the Lord and had been born again. Things tend to get lost when they are passed down from generation to generation. Things lose meaning. Because of that, Paul ministers to the people he didn't know personally. Um, in Colossians 2 verse 8, Beware lest anyone spoil you through philosophy and deceit according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. So this is important information. He says beware. The word beware is actually a compound word, and it comes from two different words. The second word where is actually where we get the word war from. So in sense, it's talking about be at war. It's a military term used to be on guard. In other words, if you aren't aware that this is how Satan comes at you, it's like an army post being unguarded. It would allow the enemy free access. The word spoil used in this verse has a military term. It means when an enemy comes in and conquers another and they spoil them. They strip them of everything that is valuable. So this is talking about beware lest Satan come and strip you of, of the things that are valuable that God has given you. He does this through philosophy. If Satan came in a red suit with a pointy tail and a pitchfork and horns and he came to threaten lives, Christians would fight against him and resist him because it would be so obvious. But the scripture says Satan comes in subtle ways, just like he came against Adam and Eve. He chose the most subtle animal of creation. Satan comes with lies and deception. Ephesians 6 says that we put on the whole armor of God so that we stand against the wiles of Satan. And wiles means lies. He's not going to come out come out at you with a red suit. It's not that obvious. The word philosophy to an average person doesn't mean a thing. Today, most people would think we don't deal with philosophy. They think philosophy is about people like Aristotle. They come up with these approaches towards life and philosophy ideas. People think, I don't have a philosophy. But all the word philosophy is talking about is a study of life when you come to these basic conclusions. Another word is paradigm or worldview or an outlook. Your approach toward life is what this is talking about. Paul here is saying that how Satan comes against you is through a philosophy, a worldview, an attitude. There is difference here between just thought it's not a lot of it's that a lot of people just have individual thoughts but they don't weave them together to form a philosophy they just have these random thoughts they may have some truths from god's word they have this truth over here and this truth over here but they don't weave them together so that it forms a doctrine or a philosophy and so th they have individual truths, but it doesn't really change their whole outlook on life. People can have a philosophy, 
which was brought down through generations. A way of thinking, until you dismantle the old philosophy and reestablish a new philosophy, you may hear individual truths and, and benefit from it to a degree, but the traditions and doctrines a man will make the word of no effect. If you have a wrong approach towards things and a wrong philosophy, it will stop the power of God flowing in your life. Satan comes through thoughts, and the word philosophy spe specifically talks about a system of thoughts. A way of thinking. Certain places where you come from have different philosophies, such as a big city versus a small town. So what I mean is like um, with a big city, um, people, you know, have the more busy lifestyle and and they have kind of that busy attitude. Like, I'm, and I'm not bad mouthing them. You know, I live in a city um, versus, you know, kind of like a, a nice small town. You know, people are friendly and, and that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm talking about there. It's it's a different attitude from a different point of place. And, and that's a philosophy. Being an optimist and a pessimist is a philosophy. Depression is a philosophy. And I know it's contrast to what people believe. Most believe it's chemical imbalance. And we try to come up with organic reasons for everything. But Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Your life, your emotions, your success or failures are going the way they're going because of the way you think. And even more specifically, your general outlook, your philosophy upon things. Let's see here. Um, Acts 17 verse 18. Then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him and and some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. So uh, during Paul's ministry, he met some philosophers. And it talks about two groups, Epicureans and Stoics. Epicureans were a group of people who were started by a philosopher named Epicurus. And they were around 300 years before Christ. And this Epicurus had a philosophy that even though he didn't uh, believe that, e even though he did believe that God existed, he didn't believe that there was a God and that there would be more like, and they would be more like agnostics today. He believed there was a God. He wasn't involved in human affairs. He believed there was no heaven or hell. It was basically just live life to the fullest and have fun. Don't use restraints. And that's the philosophy a large segment of people have today. And then there's the Stoics. The Greek word for Stoic means porch. And in the marketplace, it was surrounded by an apartment building and all the balconies in it. And it was common practice for philosophers to come out of the porches and yell out their philosophies to people when they were shopping. Basically, it was like street preachers, and they tried to promote their philosophies. Stoics believed that pleasure should be avoided. Your um, so, uh, and Stoics, um, for Star Trek fans, would probably be maybe like Spock. Didn't really show a lot of emotion. So that that would be the modern version of a Stoic. Epicurus, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe a Will Ferrell type, you know, like from the movie Old School, So <laughs> if you see that movie. So those are the modern versions of what, what would it be, you know, an Epicurus versus a Stoic. Let's see here. Um, your philosophy affects you more than you realize. Some people think that they are just this type of personality and they don't believe, and I don't believe that's so. 
I do believe that you can categorize people in personality groups, but it's not because their DNA determines it. People have let the world mold them. In Romans 12, verse 2 says, Do not be conformed into the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. The word conform means poured into the mold. It's talking about don't let the world's, world's philosophy dominate you. The way you think determines how you act. That is my lesson for today. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. Um, I know I, um, I was doing John and that kind of stuff, and I will get back to John. Um, but this one, um, it's really important um, how we think um, because it affects our lives and even what we listen to, too. Um, because it says, as a man thinks them, starts so easy. So if you're having bad thoughts, you know, it's going to affect you whether you like it or not. So, um, and we need to take that to heart. And I might even do some less, because Proverbs is a great one, and I'll do more of the Proverbs ones, too. So, um, and like I said before, um, if you like my lessons, share them so more people can get the Word of God. And also subscribe, because I always post new stuff on there. So, with that, um, in the future, I might do um, some on healing um, cause I know that's always a popular one. Um, and also I probably will get back to, uh, more, more of the John ones cause, um, one of my f Facebook friends, um, I just, p just put up a post saying, you know, who needs to read more of the Bible and, and I was scrolling uh, on, on the status and I, it was just shocking. Like a lot of people said, I do, you know? Like, and, and it's sad that that's the way we are, um, in our culture, you know, we just, you know, don't put the emphasis on it, um, that we should, because we get our strength from the word of God, you know, his word is final and, you know, he gives us power, you know, so we need to get back to the word of God. And that's why I teach, you know, from the word of God, like in John or my Philippians ones, which I might do. Because that's that's the basics that we need to know today. So I'll leave you with that. God bless.